In this video, I want to talk about how I pushed myself out of my comfort zone this year, how I've stopped feeling like I am shrinking, and how I've started to make discomfort feel more comfortable. Firstly, let's talk about how to get out of your comfort zone in the most helpful way. So everyone has seen this drawing or some kind of variation of it. You've got your big comfort zone over here, and then all the way over here, you have where the magic happens. But this advice is bad. As soon as you remove yourself that far away from your comfort zone, you're immediately going to go into survival mode. You're probably not going to be learning anything. Our neural pathways are most concentrated within our comfort zone. So we want to be building upon them to create growth. The magic doesn't happen all the way over there. The magic happens right about here, sitting right at the edge of your comfort zone, building on what already exists. I get socially anxious sometimes and social anxiety convinced me that working with my laptop in a cafe on my own was really embarrassing. The staff would think that I was a weirdo sitting there with my little laptop and other people would think, who does she think that she is? As they all watched me tap, tap, tap in a way. Obviously, I also know that those thoughts are crazy and kind of self-centered, but that's how anxiety works. So I started by working in a library. The library is well within my comfort zone. I've always been a library gal. I connected a semi-scary behavior to a pretty cozy, comfortable location. And soon enough, I was working at cafes and not thinking twice about it. To get into the habit of doing things that are uncomfortable, try attaching them to things that feel safe and feel easy. Build on the edge of your comfort zone. Work with your nervous system. A long time ago, I flew myself to Sydney. I went to an event and when I got home at the end of the night to my hotel, my jaw hurt so much. And I was like, huh, I had no idea that I was clenching my jaws so hard from anxiety. My body involuntarily had clenched my jaw at this event because it was just feeling uncomfortable. It wasn't feeling safe. When you're pushing yourself out of your comfort zone, you might tense up and feel rigid. You might have shallow breathing. You might feel your chest tighten. Your body won't feel calm. And when your body isn't calm, it's sending the signal to your brain that you're in danger. Part of learning to be comfortable with discomfort is telling your body that the things you find uncomfortable are safe. When you do a presentation, you aren't dying. When you talk to new people, you aren't being chased by a lion. By practicing techniques that calm your body, you signal to the body that you're okay, you're safe. You can regulate your nervous system and stop associating a discomfort zone activity with being unsafe. The first tool that we all know to regulate our bodies and tell our bodies that we are safe is deep breathing. So a big breath in, and a long breath out and make that breath out really really long it makes a difference another tool is yawning I made myself yawn literally just by saying the word yawning like that wasn't actually intentional but to get yourself to yawn try oh no I can't stop yawning <laughs> if like me you can induce yawning really easily or you can try making the sound of the letter R it's harder for your body's nervous system to think that you're in danger if you're standing there yawning if you are interested in the science behind this and the different ways to tell your body that you are safe therapy in a nutshell's video on soothing anxiety in the nervous system is great and goes into tons of detail I'll have it linked below something that I've been doing lately to get out of my comfort zone is learning Spanish on Lingoda, an online language learning school. A platform that connects you with native level teachers to learn a language. So I'm about to go into a Lingoda class and I wanted to show you what that looks like. So you've got the self-study part of things so you can see the words and phrases of the lesson. So you can go through this if you want to prep or even after the class if you just want to refresh. Even though I'm learning Spanish because I want to learn Spanish, I'm also learning Spanish because it just makes me uncomfortable and I like putting myself in situations where I'm uncomfortable for whatever reason. <laughs> so these classes are are available for you to book on Zoom. You can learn English, business English, Spanish, German, French, and you can do one-on-one -on -one classes if that's more comfy for you, or you can do group classes, but the maximum amount of people in a group class is like five people. So you're still getting one-on-one -on -one attention. Lessons take place 24 seven over Zoom. So you can literally book in anytime. All you need is an internet connection and 60 minutes to fit a language lesson anywhere in your day. So Lingoda can give you a little language plan like they've given me if you're like, I have no idea where to start. But if you're someone who's like a bit more advanced, maybe you did Spanish in high school or German in high school and you're like, nah, I just kind of want to pick and choose. Maybe you're going on holiday and you're like, this is what I want to learn. You can pick the particular lesson that you want to go through. I'm young on Michelle I don't really learn the alphabet, but I can give it a crack. I think it's Car Ele. Another class downer. Once again, a Spanish speaking queen. I feel like in the classes, I am comprehending a lot more. And because you're also being pushed on the spot, like you're being pushed out of your comfort zone to say words that you don't necessarily know, you're getting things wrong, which is one of the best ways to learn. And also you can just ask them questions. Like if you don't understand something during the class, you can just ask. 
and they have answers for you because they are really good at speaking Spanish. If you sign up for the seven day trial using the link in my description down below, you can get three group lessons for free or you can get one one on one class for free. So you can try it out, see if it's a good fit for you. Use my link below to get 30% off your very first payment. Once again, using the link below, you can get 30% off of your first payment. The magic questions. In Ellen Hendrickson's book, How to Be Yourself, she talks about the magic questions that you need to ask yourself when you're feeling anxious about stepping outside of your comfort zone. They are, what specifically are you anxious about? How likely is that to happen? And how can you cope? I'd also add another question that can be helpful sometimes, but not always. What can you do to prevent your fears from coming to life? This is very similar to Tim Ferriss and his technique called fear setting. So firstly, consider the thing that you want to do that's out of your comfort zone. For example, skateboarding. Then you want to write down what you're anxious about. Everyone will think that I'm stupid is not specific enough. I will fall, someone will point and they will laugh. It's specific, that's good. Then you wanna ask, how likely is it that that will happen? In this case, I put two out of 10. You'd have to be pretty unlucky to be around a bunch of people that would point and laugh if you fell. Sometimes the likelihood is higher and that's okay. Then you wanna ask, how can I prevent that from happening? Be careful with this because things like practice and preparation can become a coping mechanism, but you could potentially practice not falling. Just remember, sucking is safe. It's it's fine. But in some cases, you really can't prevent failure. So if you're asking someone out, you really have no control of whether they say yes or not. There are a few little things you can do, but you can't actually change whether someone's attracted to you. And that's when your coping tools come in. So write down what you would do to cope if the worst of the worst did happen. So if you went to the skateboard park, you fell, a bunch of people laughed, what are you gonna do? You could have a laugh at yourself, you could keep on going. You could ask whoever is laughing at you for advice. People that love giving advice, even if they've just been rude to you. There are so many ways that you can cope if the worst thing happens. You're not going to die. So this is a journaling activity that you can do whenever you are pushing yourself out of your comfort zone. Go through those prompts. Specific anxieties, likelihood, prevention, and coping tools. Reframe the event. Before you go into a new comfort zone pushing experience, decide on your frame. The frames that you choose direct what you pay attention to. If you think that Instagram is a place where people judge you, you're going to see every like as confirmation that someone has perceived perceived and judged you, or you're just going to see a lack of likes. If you see Instagram as a place for inspiration, for connection, you're going to see every like as a sign that you have impacted someone, you've inspired someone in their day, you've made someone think. Going on a little ocean dip, one frame is cold and uncomfortable. Another frame is a quick way to reset and refresh. Going to the gym, one frame is a scary place with a bunch of judgy people. Another frame is a place full of mostly supportive people that have strong personal goals. Two people can go through the exact same thing and have a wildly different experience just based on their frame. Your frame informs what you pay the most attention to, so choose a frame that allows you to pay attention to the good stuff, the stuff that supports your growth. Reframe discomfort. So there was a study done on 557 participants. They told half of these participants as they went into a beginner's improvisation workshop that the goal was to feel uncomfortable. The goal was to feel like you've been pushed out of your comfort zone and that would be a sign of progress. The exercise they did was called focus. So you'd be the focus of everyone's attention, everyone else in the room would be frozen. I guess you'd have to make a fuss because this is an improvisation workshop. Then you would need to tap someone else on the shoulder, they would become the focus, you would freeze. Sounds terrible. When they played the tapes of this improv back, they measured persistence, so how long someone would be the focus for, and they measured risk taking, so how many risks would a person take when they were the focus. The participants that were told to pursue discomfort took more risks and were more persistent. They were also way more likely to believe that they'd achieved their personal goal in the workshop. So there are actually a few more studies that support this one. You know that I'm going to share a study with you. We love a study. So in one study on journaling, half the participants were told this journaling experience was supposed to feel uncomfortable. If they were feeling discomfort. That meant that they were making emotional progress. After finishing, these participants were more likely to believe that they'd achieved their personal goals and they were more likely to give journaling another go. Because they'd reframed journaling as uncomfortable, they were more likely to do it again. In another academic study, people who were told that feeling anxious was good, that it gave them focus, it gave them the energy that they needed. They actually increased their blood flow just by thinking that by an average of half a liter per minute, which is a fair bit. Just retuning how you can see a situation literally allows your body to perform better. Reframe discomfort.
it as progress and where you can reframe anxiety as energy and focus. Reframe failure. So people who have self-belief and they have confidence tend to attribute their failures to a lack of effort or a lack of strategy. People who have low self-confidence, low self-belief tend to attribute their failures to a lack of ability. If you're thinking, well, wonderful, I definitely have low self-belief, but I don't actually know how to change that. A really practical way to do it is to actually measure your effort, your time invested and your strategy before you go into something. The reason this is important is because if every time you get out of your comfort zone and you fail, you attribute it to a lack within yourself, it's gonna be really hard for you to bounce back. You're gonna shrink back really quickly into your comfort zone. Instead, consider how much effort have I actually put into learning how to skate? Not really that much, you've just started. Well, then it kind of makes sense that you suck. Wouldn't most people suck at skating, Fesco? You'd have to be an exception not to. But you're not the exception, you're the rule. What you're experiencing is standard. How much time did you put into the strategy behind the first video that you put up? How much time does it usually take for YouTubers to succeed? Have you spent that amount of time? It probably makes sense that your first video then didn't go viral. If you take every single failure personally, it's going to be really hard for you to ever put yourself out of your comfort zone. So instead, when you experience failure, try to create meaning behind it quickly that isn't related to you being a personal failure, but has nothing to do with your flaws, but it's just kind of the product of reality. Failure is normal, mistakes are normal, it's okay to make them. Just don't make them mean anything about you. Build momentum daily. So Stephen Guys wrote in his book, Momentum, the chief reason that people fail at anything is that they take real momentum for granted or assume that they have it before they do. People think that doing something for a week or a month straight means that they can coast. No, no, no. They haven't built long-term momentum yet. Generate short-term momentum every day as if it's day one. Pushing yourself outside of your comfort zone sadly isn't a one and done activity. You can't just do it once and then say, yep, tick, I'm now out of my comfort zone and my comfort zone has grown. You have to keep on doing things that are pushing you out of your comfort zone in order for your comfort zone to actually grow and not immediately shrink back. Just because you've done something new and out of your comfort zone for a week doesn't mean that it's a habit. It probably took you years to get to the point where brushing your teeth is a habit. Don't expect just because you got out of your comfort zone once that you'll keep on doing it again. Consider every day as a chance to create momentum to get out of your comfort zone. Don't just expect it to happen. Become deeply invested in the reward. Becoming deeply, deeply invested in the reward that you get out of any habit is one of the best ways to stay consistent with it. And that includes the habit of getting out of your comfort zone. When I am regularly getting out of my comfort zone and I am not talking about going to a new country, going skydiving, I'm talking about having a chat to a few more people that I would usually, going to a clay making event, trying something new, I feel better. I feel so much more alive. I feel happier in my day to day. Even if in those moments I feel uncomfortable. Compared to how I feel when I'm constantly living in my comfort zone, which is like I am coasting. It's like I'm not growing. I can feel like I'm shrinking. The difference in my day to day is noticeable, it's tangible. When you become deeply invested in that difference of how you feel when you are getting out of your comfort zone, it's going to be a lot easier for you to motivate yourself to get out of your comfort zone. If you liked this video, you'll probably like my video on how to become your best self. It's probably one of my favorite videos that I've done recently. I'm gonna have it linked down below as well as on the screen. I appreciate you so very much and I will see you soon.